Nightmare Alley from 2021. This is uh, directed by Guillermo del Toro, um, starring Bradley Cooper, Tony Collette, uh, Kate Blanchett, and Rui Mara, Willem Dafoe. Um, the IMDb plot is an ambitious carny with a talent for manipulating people with a few well-chosen words, hooks up with a female psycho- psychiatrist who's even more dangerous than he is. Um, and like I said, this is a new film. However, it's based on a book from, I think, the 40s. And there was also a, a movie, an older movie adaptation of this, this story well. And I was not familiar with either the older movie or the book uh, before I saw this film. And, uh, you know, Del Toro is one of my favorite directors. So I'll see anything that he, that he does. Um, but, but really what struck me with this film, um, and I'll get into kind of more of the plot as, as I discuss this, is it, it really, to me, what resonated mostly is that how important it is to, to know yourself like know thyself, which is, you know, that, that famous, um, uh, phrase, right. I mean, I think this movie really speaks to this. And if you don't know yourself, um, that inner version of yourself will actually control you and guide you through life without you really having the agency that, that you think you have. Um, and that that self-reflection is, is critically important and something that at least for me, as I've gotten older, um, especially during the pandemic with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, self-reflection, medit- not necessarily meditation, but uh, reflectiveness, um, therapy, all these different things to help me better know myself. I'm able to realize the parts of myself that have been controlling my life. So, for example, in this film, um, you know, Bradley Cooper's character uh, starts off the movie actually like running away from his past. Like he had a, um, a relationship with his father that he didn't like. His father is very weak and alcoholic. Um, his mom actually left him um, because him and his, his dad, uh, because his dad was so weak and pathetic. Um, and he actually ends up basically killing his father too in the beginning of the movie, like letting him freeze to death. So he's kind of burying, like literally burying his past and trying to run away from it and escape this fact that he actually is, is so damaged psychologically from this inferiority complex because of his parents that he, that he's taken on all these other, um, uh, these, these, this job basically as a, a medium, right? Where as a medium, he's tricking other people into thinking he's communicating with the dead. So that's a way for him to feel superior to them because deep down inside, he feels actually incredibly inferior to everyone. And because he's trying to run away from that inferiority complex, instead of addressing it, he just makes choices in the movie that as it goes on and on that are basically destructive. And he ends up losing everything that he gets, pushing everyone away, like hurting people um, throughout the entire course of the film because he's not able to actually know himself um, until the very, very end, which is a, like a tragic ending, essentially, was accepting the fact that he is um, this uh, basically <laughs> incredibly inferior, um, inferior person. Um, so for me, I think this really sums up very well, this, this idea of you have to, as you go through life, reflect, understand what your past is, what different traumas you might've had and, and address those things openly. I mean, you can't like, uh, erase the past, but you also can't run from it either, which is what Bradley Cooper's character does. Cause it will take control of your life. Um, so know thyself. I think this film just really hit it on the head for me. Um, I found it very powerful and just a really important message. Mm-hmm. What did you, I'll, I'll speak to that a little bit. Yeah. Later. What did you think of the movie? Oh, I thought the movie was fantastic. Um, great acting, uh, very film noir, uh, which is a genre that, that I like. Um, but it, again, the, the, the morality tale, I guess you can call it that in this. Um, I think Del Toro in, in all of his films, they're all basically simple like morality tales. Um, and I think this one more so than, than even some of his previous other films, uh, it, it was really self-evident to me what he was trying to say and, and this message here of uh, not letting your, your past control yourself uh, was, was just very, really resonated with me and, and really stood out. But I thought it was a beautiful, beautifully directed film, great acting, great performances, um, just all around uh, fantastic film. And one of my favorites of last year, actually, I was really surprised how much I, uh, how much I enjoyed it. Good to know. Um, so on the message of it, I'm actually very intrigued by the fact that you took away that and maybe I just need to process this movie a little bit better. To me, I guess I sort of gravitated more towards the the reverse of what you said because mm-hmm. the movie, and maybe in doing so, it is a cautionary tale that if you don't know yourself, this is what's going to happen to you. But I think I was just shook by this person who, as Del Toro says in his interviews, has a hole in his, in his heart mm-hmm. and is constantly trying to fill that up with something or the other 
and makes bad choices. And even though love comes to him, success comes to him, he somehow manages to squander all the, all of that away, mm-hmm. which is really sad. Um, and he's sort of, it's almost like a full circle life that whatever he's trying to escape, he's sort of back at the same spot. So I was sort of gravitating more towards the inevitability or inevitable. What is the inevitability? Word? Yeah. Like it was, he was Thank faded. You. Yeah. Yeah. Faded, And that's what you come back to and you, you can't really escape it. So it's an interesting sort of slightly shifted lens at looking at the same thing that mm-hmm. what you're bringing up, which I actually didn't see, but now I see it now that you mention it. So that's interesting. Yeah, like he is faded only because he is like, you know, Del Toro said, I mean, I didn't read that interview, but yeah, he does have a hole in his heart. And that hole is this inferiority complex that yeah. he got from his parents. I mean, actually, I love how they only subtly mention the, the fact that his, it, about his mom and his dad, even though that really is the largest thing. And that is what drives this entire plot, actually, is his background. And it only barely comes up. And, and it's in one or two scenes that kind of get into it. But that's really what, that is his whole. And he's trying to fill it with all these things because instead of um, addressing it and recognizing, oh, yes, I have this inferiority complex and really knowing himself, that's the only way to fill that hole. And because he doesn't do that, his psychological damage from his past is what makes it fate and inevitable that he winds up at the end of the movie, basically with nothing. Um, And he's like the worst version of himself at the end, just because he doesn't understand himself and instead he's trying to run away from it. And and I think that's the message that I got away from this movie that if you, um, and this is something, again, I think just recently I've been realizing a lot um, with life is that if you don't properly know yourself, then these, your subconscious is actually controlling you and things that you might feel are actual fate or quote unquote destiny is really just the fact that your subconscious is guiding you in this direction. But I think you can, by knowing yourself, overcome that and then be able to have more agency in your life and make those decisions um, knowing that. I mean, again, you can't like, just like Bradley Cooper's character can't change his past. He can't make his mom stay with him. He can't make his dad, not an alcoholic. Um, But I think because he's ignoring those things, that's why he ends up with the fate. So I, I do think the fate is definitely part of this, but not, in a sense of like destiny where you have no control over it it's only because he's he's ignorant of himself and that's what i think is, is something that, as i go through life i'm always learning more about myself as i go through it and the more i do that the more i've realized uh the more i control i actually have over things um that i, I might have thought before where i was like okay well i'm making this decision i don't really know why but i'm just gonna make it it's like well actually now i know why because of certain things in my past and it opens up more opportunities for me the more you you know yourself so th- that was why this movie really spoke to me so much um even though it, i've only seen it one time a month ago um but it really uh just uh just hit me that message wow yeah and to your point like i mean i don't know like from my point of view I don't know if you can control everything. Obviously, you can't control the outcomes, but right. what you can control is the choices that you're making. And if you are making those choices with some recognition of who you are and, and the why behind it, I think you can be at more peace with those decisions. And mm-hmm. that's something that really resonates mm-hmm. with me. I've always tried to do that. Whether those decisions are right or wrong, that's a different thing. Of course, and, yeah. You know, of course, you look back at them and question them even. But in the moment, they definitely speak to a truth of where you're at and where you've been, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the movie itself, though, and maybe I need to watch this movie again. And also, I watched the Tyron Power movie maybe two months ago or so. Oh, okay. I watched this one. Okay. Which is amazing. And maybe I shouldn't have done that. Um I'm mixed on the Del Toro movie. There are aspects of it which I really love. Obviously, the crafts. Oh, yeah. How the whole thing is constructed. I do think it's it's a little bit duller than it needed to be. Um, in like terms of... In, in the what, middle parts and such uh, the pacing of the movie. Um, and I'm still sort of wrestling with this because though I really admire and appreciate the craft side of it in some ways i think all that spectacle though it did stay with me so i give it full credit right in the moment i think it maybe overpowered some of the subtleties of the movie and what is Mm. happening 
And at the center of it, Bradley Cooper's performance, which is very internal until the last scene, mm -hmm. he's almost sort of living in a shadow because that's partly who he is. And I right. think the, the theatrics of everything around him sort of overtake the movie a little bit and it made me sort of feel that the director is too aware of the messages of the movie uh, and because that's why he's sort of heightening up everything. So I don't know, I have mixed feelings. I really appreciated the world and the carnival and everything and all the different characters that he meets over there. They obviously add a lot of rich texture to the movie, but I don't know, having watched the 40s movie, which is stripped down, mm -hmm. I don't get to see a lot of the details of how he learns mentalism and all of that stuff from the the David Strathairn character and what have you sort of left for you as an audience to connect the two dots and figure out how he learned all of this stuff versus in this movie they really go into a lot of detail of telling the audience like how he's learning and how does mm -hmm. this work and how he's going to call on Rooney Mara and the audience to do it I don't need to know all that you know mm. so I think the movie this is how I feel about Del Toro in general is how I felt about Shape of Water as well that there's a lot of great detail and texture that I appreciate, but it also overpowers the simplicity of the storytelling that the audience can just feel for themselves, you know? Yeah, so. interesting, because I mean, I agree with you in terms of Del Toro definitely is, he leans in a lot to the, the I guess I'll use the word spectacle, though it's not like his movies are like, you know, Titanic or something, but yeah. um, this one actually, I, I think was, dialed down for him and actually True. what i appreciated ab about it was it, it it felt more um like a classic uh hollywood film in terms of the pacing and the fact that it wasn't so focused on a lot of the um the externalities of what was going on in the story which i think is something that he does a lot which i appreciate but i definitely can can can, can agree with that he sometimes gets carried away with that a bit um, this one to me seemed more stripped down for him, um, which I think was yeah. why maybe the message to, for the movie resonated a lot more with me because then it stood out a lot and I was able to pay more attention to the narrative, which again is very subtle, like I mentioned, in terms of what's actually going on and how Bradley Cooper is uh, creating this mask for himself for an entire movie because yeah. he's trying to be someone who he's not because he has to feel superior to everybody else that he comes across. Every single person he has to be superior because deep down he feels he's not. He feels yeah. he's lower than anyone else, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I got. I should check out the, the original check out the adaptation too. It is relatively less lesser than Del Toro's other movies, but I think I'll be very curious to hear what you feel about the yeah. original movie, which I think hit me even harder. Hmm. To be honest with you, that said, Bradley Cooper's last scene was unbelievable. Yeah. It'll yeah. stay with me for a very long time. I almost wish if the entire movie was at that level where mm -hmm. the histrionics and the theatrics of the of the accompaniments were dialed way back mm -hmm. and it was just the performance and the characters that were you know on the screen taking lead of it all um so but but yeah anyway still a great movie for sure and i'm excited to rewatch it again hey there it's alex if you like the review and discussion kron and i just had make sure you subscribe to our channel movies that shaped us to get full episodes Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.